25 summers. If you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe to the page. <clears throat> so you was telling us something about people dropping letters in your cell saying, uh, come to the yard. Uh, you tell us about that. Yeah, a couple of one, a couple of cases and shit like like we're having these drama with these Cubans and shit. You know they got the dick riders and all of that. But one day coming from program, uh, somebody dropped a kite in my cell, man, upon a piece of paper. I get in there and I read it, and it said, uh, "Come to the yard tonight, nigga, and bring your knife." So now whenever you hear some shit like that. That's just a call out as mandatory, so you gotta go, right? But you know, there's there's occasions and there's a lot of motherfuckers that don't that they won't go. They'll pull a stunt, they'll drop a slip on themselves, they tell the police they can't go, they got problems in the yard, cause the jail is a, a mixture of a bunch of faggot niggas that wanna be that wanna be tough guys and all of that stuff, right? But see me, it's different, man, because I didn't know where the threat was coming from. I didn't know where the hit was coming from, but I know the, the call out was mandatory, man. Packed up all my shit in my cell, got everything together, man. Got them two things out, man, and went out to the fucking yard, man, to see what was good, you know. I didn't know who it was, but all I know is I'm going up on this wall. I got these two jump offs with me, man. Anybody come close to there looking funny, scrupulous, man, I'm tearing their ass up right there on the spot, man. It was just some real sucker shit from the dudes, man, because I was moving a little things here and there. A lot of haters, man. A lot of dudes know what went down, man. Trying to test your will, trying to see how strong you is, whether you're going to fake, you're going to bend. Because if you don't come out, then you open up the doors for the wolves, man. The wolves are going to be like, that's a coward move. You ain't play the yard on your on your mandatory call out. So now you got drama. Now you got to get this up. You got to get that up. So this is how the friendly extortion game go down too. So all call outs is mandatory, man. Somebody holler at you, man, in there with the kite, with the whatever, man. Take it out there, man. Win, lose, a draw, man. Give it, give it what you got, man. A little bit of heart, man. See, this is all the neutral niggas got to go through this out there, man. But all these bloods and all of these dudes, man, they don't go through this type of nonsense, man. Because when they get a kite sent to them, man, they going to send a kite to their big homie. And he got a thousand dudes in red running around. So he sent a doja after him real quick. Knock him out the box so that you can live, you know. But this rule only applies to neutral dudes, man. You get a kite, man. Take it out there, man, and address that beef immediately, man. So who who ended up dropping kites in your cell? This was a uh, dick ride of Puerto Rican dudes, man. Uh Wanted to see how tough I really was because they done heard I done tore a few Cubans up, man, and a few of them up, man. So they figure, man, if they send a smoke screen and drop the kite and I don't come out, man, that's leverage for them to slide in and move on me, what I got going on, what I got. So they basically was just trying, trying the motherfucker's will to see if he was down to get busy or not, you know. They'll do that too, man. It's a test, man. They put you through the little test. But nobody came at me, man. I was ready. I was locked and loaded. I was ready, man. So we was we was talking when you know we was out there. He was telling me something about like you know, an inmate or something assaulting a sergeant somewhere or something of that nature. And yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of that to go on, but and it's a couple isolated situations where they don't got a few inmates. Like they got this one nigga man that was in Kasaki with us. Back in like 87, man, he uh walking down the walkway, man, coming out the mess hall, man, and turned down the corridor, man, lieutenant walking by. Now, let me know you the lieutenant rank is. You got the officers, the bottom of the line. You got the sergeant, you got the lieutenant, you got the captain, and you got the superintendent, and those is the big dogs. They got the superintendent, dude, the lieutenant, walking down the compound, man, together, man, and out of nowhere, man, they got this brother just jumped off the line. And just blast the shit out of this superintendent, man. That's the first time that shit ever happened. I'm talking about he hit him with the knife. Boom, boom, dropped him, man. All you heard was the lieutenant scream. The lieutenant scream, he didn't even get hit. The superintendent that got hit, man, he just dropped him, man. He must have passed out or whatever the case is. What I mean when I tell you that they tore this prisoner ass up, the police... I mean, they whipped his ass right there all the way to SHU on that, man. I don't think the shit was worth it, man. If you ask me, man, it was a doja move, man. Somebody told dude to do it, gave him an order, gave him a plate, gave him to do the shit. Because anybody in their right mind know, man, 
you shoot that superintendent in the end, man, you sign your death certificate, man, because they're going to be putting hands on you everywhere you go. Anything you do, they're going to put hands on you, so you're going to be towed up anyway, man. That's some serious stupid shit. So, with everybody, just like with the booty badness, with everybody being, you know, quote unquote, such tough guys and killers and gorillas and all this in the prison system, why wouldn't they do it to the guards and just accept it? Why wouldn't just accept the consequences rather? Like, you know, everybody's you're right. you're tough. So, like, how the booty badness live and everybody's tough. How would that you're guards You're right. You're live? right. You got all these tough guys, all these gangsters, and then, and then, and then now you got to look for. Where all, where all the punk, where all the soft dudes at? Because everybody's a gangster. Just like on the other hand, you got all these dudes coming to the penitentiary. They all was drug dealers, big kingpins. So now I'm looking for where all the crackheads and where all the users at. Because then everyone is going to paint the picture on themselves to be in the one light, man, when you're not. So I would agree with you. I agree that if you a gangster on the outside and you let that thing go pop, then in the inside, it's no different. It shouldn't be the matter. No consequences, no nothing. But the change, the, the, the game changes, man, when you come in. I know dudes, man, they done shot dudes up in the block all week, all month for years, man. They known around their way for carrying that toaster and letting it go, man, and all that. They get up in the penitentiary, man, and they ain't got that thing to go out like that in the street. They turn into straight girls, man. I'm talking about all of a sudden they don't want no problem. This ain't what they in prison for. This is not what they here to do. Nah, nigga, if you a man, you a man. So if you need to do this now, then this is what you do now. So I, I, I find it ironic, man. It's funny style how motherfuckers could be gangsters on the outside and then come into the penitentiary and it and, and, and won't confront a situation whether it's a knife fight or not. But like I said, that gun make a dude, man. That gun force and, and inflicts force power in a motherfucker because when you inside and you ain't got that gun to go pow and you got to use your own skills to protect yourself, your hands or make you a weapon or whatever, the game changes, man. Dudes get a different look with that, man. And so they, they're not as tough as you think they are, man, in there, man. It's a bunch of them. So let me ask you something about your street reputation versus your prison reputation. So a guy comes in prison, he got sentenced to life because he killed 10 people on the street. Is he respected more in prison? Because there are no guns in prison. So is he respected more in prison because of his charge and he's left alone? Or is it your street rep has nothing to do with your prison rep? Yes and no. And vice versa, when you come out of prison, that has nothing to do with on street. Elaborate on both of them. Your yeah. street rep versus your prison rep in prison and on the street. Thank yeah, you. if you come in a penitentiary, man, and you got a you got a, a substantial body count and all of that, and you've been putting dudes in the dirt, yeah, your name is going to ring bells, and it's going to make dudes uh, second guess the subject of messing with you and all of that. But not in all cases, man, because in some cases, man, you got some dudes that's living for that, man. You got some dudes that's trying to get up just by making the move on you. You got five bodies and you came in here and now all of a sudden this dude run down on you, man, and get you the business, man. His rep go up, man. So, yeah, sometimes dude come in the penitentiary and won't have no problems because of his street rep and all of that. But in a lot of cases now with the generation and the prison changing, these dudes coming in there now to try anybody. Nobody's safe off limits. Nobody. So what do you mean nobody's safe? Meaning, elaborate on that. Meaning, meaning, man, you could get hit today just like I could get hit today. Like I thought I never was going to get hit. I didn't, you know, I didn't think I was the baddest gorilla motherfucker in there. But I, man, I handle my eyes, man. I do what I got to do. But nah, man, it's just, that's not how it go down, man. It's a whole different story when a motherfucker got the jump on you. If he blasts you, man, nine times out of ten, man, you good as God, man, because he got the jump on you. He hitting you with a piece of steel, man. You ain't got nothing protecting yourself or nothing, man. You going to take the blow, man. And if it ain't in a crucial vital area of your body, man, you know what I'm saying? You might you might survive and get away or still get busy. But if he hit you anyway in the upper torso, man, you're going to need medical attention, man. So the game is real, real shaky when it comes to that, man. So nobody's off limits. So nobody's safe in the prison system. Is it safe to say that? That goes from guards, visitors, janitors, contractors. You're it, saying nobody's safe. Nobody's safe, man. Word. If you in if you in arm shot distance in that yard in that walkway somewhere, and it's time to go down, man, 
and they got them things back, man, you, your chances on getting hit is great, man. You know what I'm saying? Unless there's situations where shit do go down, like, you know, some rare shit, like maybe you got the same tactic and skill as Jet Li and Bruce Lee and them niggas, then you might not get it scratched. But if you just a regular dude and all of that, man, chances on getting a battle wound, man, and that game is great, man, going into the penitentiary, man. So I don't know too many dudes that saying that they did a substantial amount of time in the penitentiary, didn't leave out of there without no war wound, battle wounds, and show for proof. That means ain't nobody bothering him, and he didn't bother nobody else. Okay, so he does all of that in prison. Now he comes back home. How does that play out in the streets? Okay, so what? You was in prison. That's how people feel mm -hmm. that didn't go to prison. So what? You did all that time. Mm -hmm. You know, you wasn't out here doing it. So how does that play out when you try to bring your prison res your prison reputation, excuse me, back to the streets? Some dudes is some dudes is gullible. Some dudes is subject to that. Some dudes out in the street, man, it's good to hear you talk about a prison story, man, about tell a war story in prison, what happened. That captivates dudes, man. That gets dudes' attention, man, who ain't never been there and all of that. So if you come out of the penitentiary and you got some elaborate stories to tell to these jokers in your neighborhood, man, they gonna respect that, man, for a minute or two and all of that, man. Like, once again, like the gang thing, man, when the big, when the big homies come out of the prison, they go back to the block trying to assert that big homie thing. So the younger dudes, they buy it because they hear all the stories because he going to tell them all the stories, how he was the OG, how he was this, how he was that. They jack that. They buy that for now, man, until one come along, man, and expose them and, and let it be known, man, that this dude, this dude was who that. This dude was a bird, man. He's messing with boys. He was a move. Now the game changes. But a lot of times, man, these dudes out in the street, man, they like hearing that, man. That fascinates them, man, to hear a story from prison, man, and they ain't never been there. You know, they on the verge of going. They just ain't made it through there yet. You know what I'm saying? So when they hear a dude come home and all that, and now these big homies, they they feel their sense of worth is worthless in the society now. They feel like they were don't hold no weight. They coming from the penitentiary where they was used to telling two, three hundred dudes what to do and, and when to do it and all of that. They get out here in the street. These young dudes got... They got them toasters and all that, man. They don't care if you big homie Jesus Christ. They don't care nothing about that, man. They ain't jacking none of that. So a lot of these big homies end up doing these stupid crimes to go back into the penitentiary where they was power, in power. And then they back in there and they get to tell a bunch of dudes what to do and all of that because they can control that environment. They can't control the environment in free society. So let me ask you something. I think I asked you this in, in, the, in, in the car one day, in the ride, whatever. Okay, with you being from the Bronx and then being upstate New York where I guess things are, you know, sectioned off with different people, mm -hmm. different boroughs and things like that. I was telling you, like, I never really heard you talk, like, you know, about people from the Bronx and people from Harlem. Like, I heard about you linking with people from Brooklyn primarily, which is weird. Like, what, what, what's up with that? Like, what's up with, you know, dudes from the Bronx or dudes from Harlem and far as the penitentiary, because I heard a lot of Brooklyn. Yeah, I, I gravitated toward the Brooklyn dudes because they had the same mindset as me that I don't give a fuck, I'm popping off. You beef today, you flip today, I'm flipping on Monday with you. If you got some drama, I'm addressing it right now. Them Bronx cats and all of that shit that I did know or knew of, man, they was about some, they was about some, Martin Luther King shit, man, about some let's talk it out and non-violent and be peaceful and live amongst each other. But you got to realize, man, that they housing a hundred different type of mentalities and egos together. There ain't going to be no peace unless it's war. So they put us all here together, man, to test the will of a manhood and all of that. So it's going to be drama. It's going to be on. And whenever I went to my fellow dude niggas from the Bronx and all that, they wasn't standing up, man. They wasn't standing up. Them hall niggas wasn't standing up. They stand up on them rap records, and they stand up on that other shit. But when it come down to that yard, man, and they backing that hammer and letting it go, man, in a free fall with some cats and with no real gun, them dudes was falling like beach chairs, man. So I ain't fuck with them dudes, man. I'm not going to get be isolated and picked out because these niggas is soft and won't pop off whenever shit go down. 
But the Brooklyn Cats was different, man. They had the whole idea, like I told you, man, a lot of these dudes come from backgrounds where they know how to use their hands and shit. So it's very simple for them to get it off and popping in there with them hands and all of that, man, especially against them Germans and all of that. They love doing that. So that was that was like my type of crew, man. And those are dudes I embraced, man. And it was some real live niggas from Brooklyn, man, that accepted me in their circle and I ran with them niggas for a few years, you know? So what about Queens dudes, Staten Island? What about them two? Man, you gave your opinion on the only other niggas that was coming out of Staten Island, man, in there, man, was some rat dudes, man, or some false MD niggas, man, and rat niggas, and <laughs> them niggas was let me love you, niggas, and all of that, man. They wasn't making no noise and all of that, and Queens niggas was the same way. Queens niggas didn't start making noise in the penitentiary, state penitentiary, until Fat Cat and all them dudes got knocked with Pappy and them. They kind of solidified it and put Queens on the map. Supreme Team and them with Griff, Prem and them dudes. Them niggas were some gangsters, man, from, from Queens. And Ronnie Bump and them niggas were some gangster niggas out of Queens. The rest of these jokers running up in there talking about I used to work with Fat Cat, work for Fat Cat. Them niggas is dick suckers and dick riders, lap dancers, man. They ain't did none of that. Them niggas was soft. Queens was known for the pretty girls, man. Queens always been known for the sisters and all of that out there, man. It wasn't really known for no dudes, man. Was with ground shakers and all that, man. It was straight up a fat cat and preem and them niggas like that. Yeah, man, them some ground shaking niggas out of Queens, man. But the... so, so what about people from other parts of the state, from New uh, other parts of New York State? Yeah, I met a lot of live niggas from out of state, man. More so than from my own boroughs and my own hood, man. Especially Rochester, yeah. Buffalo, Detroit, Philly, Mississippi. Alabama. I met some dudes that ride out, man. They wasn't even from New York. And what, 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 what were some of them in for? Some of the a lot of them, a lot of them was in for trafficking, drug trafficking, going back from day residence, which was wherever, Mississippi, wherever, back to New York. And when you get busted in the mix like that, that trafficking, New York will snatch you, man, and make you do that time here, man. They don't care nothing about Mississippi and all of that. So a lot of them was in for that. A lot of them met bras, moved up this way. And got busted with guns, you know, some robberies and shit, a few bodies. They don't laid a few cats down and all of that. And they come up in there, they're usually real quiet, man. But then you get to know where they're from because their names telepath who they are. Like everybody I met, the nigga, what's his name, man? Yo, everybody call him Mississippi. So he from Mississippi. Or he met this other kid from Jersey. They call this nigga Brick City. No, he from Jersey. You know, or they met this nigga here from motherfucking um, 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 Chicago. They call this nigga Shot Town. So you know where they from geographically and shit. And then you get to see how they move. They move different from the way we move in here and all of that, you know. Not necessarily means it's a slick, slick, sneaky type of move. But they move different, man. And a lot of these dudes, man. Let it be known, man, by no means necessary. They ain't give you the business because they know they ain't on neutral ground. They ain't from this new this state. They put some work in. That's why a lot of brothers is having problems from New York over in these other states and these fed joints, man, because of the stigma that New York gives off, man. You coming to New York Penitentiary, Rikers Island, down, down in the city and all that. And just because you from Philly or you from Chicago or Mississippi or Detroit, niggas rob you, take your sneakers, take all your shit off you and all of that, like you a soft dude or whatever the case is, they know that off the back, they gonna have a hard time in there. So when they come in, man, they, they banging from the front door, man. They ain't playing. So, in closing, let's talk about trigger words in prisons. Yeah. Like certain words, certain sayings mm -hmm. that you could say that it's, it's guaranteed that it's going to be on. Like there's no forgiving. Yeah, ain't you don't no have to quote the quotes if it's mm -hmm. anything too obscene. But you know, yeah. what, what are some the of the top of the, words? the top of the list? The top of the list is 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 an old cardinal rule. No, uh, it's no rules, no way around it. No apology, no nothing like that. Offer a man your jewels, man. You know what I'm saying? You offer a nigga to suck you, to suck you off and all of that. The Frank that's, Stan. The Frank, you open up the Frank Stan, man. That's the violation, man. It's got to be bloodshed and all of before that could be alleviated and all of that. Talking about somebody, mama, man, in the penitentiary, man, is an off-limit thing or no can do and all of that, man. Calling a nigga a rat, you know what I'm saying, that he snitched on somebody, man, and it's not true or if it's true or whatever, that's a no can do, man, that type of shit. 
because nigga, he snitched on him. He uh he cooperated on his co-defendant. He was a witness for this. Only them labels like that is trigger words, no can do. If them shits is no true, or in some cases they is true, you still got to pop off, man, because those are words that can't be forgiven. Dudes is in stereo. They ain't is shot distance. So when they hear that allegation, yo, you a rat, and you don't address that, then you opening up the doors for more wolves to come at you. And I told you, they like a pack of hyenas, man. So what about somebody talking about somebody's children or their wife? Okay, and, and, and that falls that falls like the mother, I was going to say the family in, in, its, in, its, in its totality. I was going to say the whole family, but then his wife, man, that's the one holding him down, man. And his kids is his planet, man. Those is off limits, too. You start talking about that, man, you got to be willing to, man, to put that knife to work, man. So what if you what if you don't have children and you're in prison? Then what's the, I guess it would be the family then. It would be the parents. family thing. Anything that you holding close to dear, you know, because we still have things we hold close to dear. What are some other? What are, what are some other trigger words? Don't, trigger that, that's, the, that's the top of the line, man. Those are the only ones that can actually get me to to really go off and do what I got to do, you know, and to whoever I got to do. Other than just straight up, you know, what I'm saying, um, um, nigga, what's up? It's on and popping. Other than that, man, those are the trigger words, man. Everything else, man, is like really irrelevant, man. You know, you pussy, nigga. You a faggot, you this, you that, you that. Those is just words, man. You can shrug those off to nothing. But when he start opening up the Frank stand and going up in the kitchen with the moms and then with the wifey and the family and all of that, that's ain't no turning back from that, man. You got to respond.